Jonathan has 46 indistinguishable blue balls, 3 indistinguishable red balls, and a green ball in a bin. He continuously draws balls from the bin without replacement until he draws the green ball. For instance, Jonathan might draw a red ball, followed it by two blue balls, another red ball, and then the green ball, completing the process. Compute the number of possible sequences of draws that are possible under these conditions. Hmm, so how can we solve something like this? Well, we know that once we get a green ball, the whole thing stops. So we should just focus on the blue and also the red. And now, because we only have three red balls compared to 46 blue balls, let's focus on the red first. And in fact, we are going to use this to help us break down two cases. Because we can think about it like, how many red balls can we get before we get a green one? And of course, in the process, we may have some blue balls in between. So in that way, how many cases are we going to get? Four. Because we could have zero red ball, one red ball, two red balls, and then three red balls. So we have these four cases. But in each case, we have to consider how many blue balls are we going to see. Maybe we could have zero blue, or maybe one blue, two blue, and then all the way up to 46 blue balls. So as you can see, we have four big cases, and in each big case, we have 47 small cases to consider. So to make this super clear, I'm going to do the following for you guys, right here. Let's say we have this, right? We have zero red, one red, two red, and then three red. And then on the side here, I'm going to put down the number of blues that we can possibly have. So let's say we have zero B, 1B, 2B, 3B, and so on. And of course, I don't need to fill in all the grid. We just have to just figure out pattern and then just write it out. And usually, I'm not going to choose like small numbers because they usually don't tell you enough information. Let's choose this one right here. So for this, it means that we are considering the case. We get three reds and two blues before we get a green one. So, three red and two blue before we get a green one. So, how many ways could that happen? Firstly, we have a total of one, two, three, four, five, five balls that he picked up. And in these five balls, we have to select three to be blue. And remember, they are all indistinguishable. So, all we have to do is, we have a total of five, and then just choose three of them to be red, and that's all. So we could have the red right here, red right here, and also red right here. Once we have that, the rest will be blue. So, the number of ways for this to happen is just five, two, three. Now, if you think about it, if we have three R and one B, we will have a total of four balls, and then again, we want to have just choose three. So you can look at it right here. This is four choose three, and then we can go up. This will be three choose three, so on, so on, so on, and then you can keep on going, da da da, da da da, like this. This right here will be six choose three, and then all the way at the end, we have six, 46 B. So, this right here will be 3 plus 46, which is 49. And then we choose three of them to be red. Yeah. And of course, the rest is pretty much the same thing. So, all we have to do now is just add them up. So, now that's it. If you look at this, how exactly do we add them up, though? Here is the deal I would like to show you. Okay. Now, if you take a look at all these numbers, notice how the second number is always the same. And we go from 3 to 49. So if we add them up, is there a nice way to do it? Yes, that's called the hockey stick identity. So let me just write down the identity and we'll explain this for you guys real quick. 
So today, if you have, let's say, some number k, choose some number k, plus the next number, which is k plus 1, but you still choose k, and then so on, so on, so on, up to the last one, let's say, n, and then you still choose k. And here, though, we have to make sure n is greater than or equal to k, and they have to be you know, non-negative integers, of course. So I'm just going to make a little note right here. This right here, it's actually very nice because we'll end up with the last number and you just add one to it and then you do k plus one, just like that. So why is this called the hockey stick though? Well, if you look at the Pascal's triangle, starting with one, 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 and then one, two, one, and then one, three, three, one, one, four, six, four, one. To get the next row, you just do one, and then you do this plus that, which is 5, and then this plus that, which is 10, this plus that, which is another 10, this plus that is 5, and 1. Okay, so this is how the hockey stick theorem looks like. You are going to look at this as uh, the k value, right? When you go like this, this is the k value. This is k equal to 0, and then this kind of diagonal, right? k is equal to 1, and then k is equal to 2. And so on, so on, so on. Horizontally, these are the n values. And we start with n equal to 0. So n is equal to 0, n is equal to 1, n is equal to 2, and so on, so on, so on. Here we go. To get the hockey stick, in this version, k choose k. So if you look at 2 choose 2, you start right here. And then you just kind of draw that right here. This is 2 choose 2. Next is 3 choose 2. Next is 4 choose 2. Guess what? When you do this plus this plus that, you are going to end up with this right here. 1 plus 3 plus 6, you get 10, don't you? And in fact, if you do like this, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, if you do the hockey stick, you get 10. And then if you do 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5, you get the next number, but I didn't write it down. But that's how it works. So when we add them up here, this right here will get what? This we will get the next number, which is 50. And then we also have the choose 4. So just like that. So now the rest is pretty much similar because if you look at this column, then you will see that you start with 2 plus 0, which is 2, and then choose 2. And then you go all the way up to 2 plus that, which is 48. And then you choose 2. And then, of course, you can keep on going. This is 1, choose 1. And then all the way, and then you have 47, choose 1. And then this is 0, choose 0. And go all the way, you have 46, choose 0. Right? But remember, we're trying to add up everybody. But vertically, this is 50 choose 4. This right here will be what? You add 1 and then you add 1. So it's 49 choose 3. And then you continue. So this right here will give you 48 choose 2. And then this right here is going to give you 47 choose 1. And now we just have to add them up and that will solve the question. But here's the trouble. If you just want to compute them individually and then add them up, it's not going to be so easy. Because for example, 49 choose 3, you will get 49, and then multiply by the next number, which is 48, and then do another one, three numbers on the top, and divide it by 3 times 2 times 1. Do you really want to compute it and then do the same thing for this, this, and that, and then add everybody? No. By the way, you cannot use a calculator for this either. So. What's a better way to do this though? The answer is that, the hockey stick identity again. However, instead of looking at k choose k plus k plus 1 choose k and so on like this, which is this direction, we could have drawn the hockey stick in the other way. So you go like this, go like that. So for example, we could also have gone like this. 1, 2, 3, this direction. But in that case, you will just go like this right here. To produce the hard key stick. So as a formula, I'm going to write this down for you guys. 
This right here is the same as saying k choose 0. And in fact, this is the same as that because this is the number of ways for you to k k things out of k things, which is just one way. You're pretty much taking everything. That's the same thing as you don't take anything at all. Next, you will have k plus 1, choose 1. Again, it's like this, it's like this. The identity I'm using is like 8 choose 2. It's the same as 8 choose 6. The number of ways for you to choose 2 things out of 8 things, it's the same as choose 6 things not to take from 8 things. So that's the idea here. And then you just keep doing the same thing until the last one, which will be n choose n minus k. And here, this will be equal to what? You will still have n plus 1. But you pretty much do this minus that. 1 cancel, so you have n minus k. So this is just the other way of the hockey stick. But now, here's the issue though. We don't have the something choose 0 here, so what do we do? Don't worry, we're just going to add it up. Or you can look at it like this. I'm just going to pretend that it was there, which is what? It would be 46 choose 0 plus that, right? So let me put that here. Suppose if we do have this, then this right here, we can use that. Starting at 46, and then we go up to n, which is 50. So we'll just go to 51, right? And then choose what? The last number right here, right? n minus k here, n minus k here. So just 51, choose 4. But I can bring this to here. Check this out. It becomes a subtraction because, you know, bring that to the other side. And now we just have to compute it. This right here, well, I'll tell you, the numbers were designed so nice so that you really don't have to do anything too hard. To compute this, you start with 51 and you have to have a total of 4 numbers. But the next number is you go down by 1 and then you do it again, you do it again. Over 4 factorial. So 4, 3, 2, 1. And then minus anything choose 0 is just going to be 1. And have a look. This is 6 and that's 24. You can reduce this and that and that will be just a 2. Check this out. This times this is 100. And then we can multiply that by 51 times 49 and then minus 1. Of course, if you want to just compute it right now, be my guest. But what we can do is we can look at this as 50 plus 1 and then multiply by 50 minus 1. And at the end, we still have this minus 1. So this right here becomes 100 times 50 square minus 1 square because the difference of 2 square formula and then minus 1. Okay, so 50 square is 2500 minus 1 and that will be 2499. But then we multiply by 100, so you just put two zeros after that. And then at the end, we have to minus 1, so that will be 2, 4, 9, 8, 9, 9. And that will be the answer for this right here. And this is the last question of the individual round of the Berkeley Math Mini Tournament for middle school students. If you want to participate in this year, it's going to be April 12th. Link will be in the description for you to check it out.